Hey folks, back for another video segment. Um, in this one, we're gonna do something a little different. We're actually gonna do a product review. Now, the reason I'm doing this product review is because, as you know by now, the Model 3 will not have a head-up display or a binnacle. Now, I know there's been a lot of hand-wringing and teeth gnashing on the internet about the fact that, of course, it's gonna have a center screen and people are so used to having something in front of them that they're, you know, they're at a loss for words. So I thought, well, I wonder if there's any kind of uh, unit out on the market, aftermarket or otherwise, that would fulfill that need. So after a little research, and I had a look around, and I chose the Navdi. Ta-da! That's what it looks like. So I reached out to the folks at Navdi, and uh, they sent me a review unit. Now, in the complete interest of transparency here, I did not pay for it. They, not, they didn't pay me to do the review. They just sent me a unit. So uh, we're going to do an unboxing, we're going to do the actual setup process, show you how it works from start to finish, and actually use it on the road. And uh, once the review is done, I'll come back and give you some final thoughts. So this is the Navdi box. You can see it's about uh, 12 inches, maybe 10, uh, about 6 inches deep or so. Um, I've never opened this, so this is going to be a, an interesting experience. Let's do a little unboxing. Uh, first things first is that it, it's in a bit of a sleeve here, so let's just pull that off. Have a quick look. Oh, that's interesting. Um, the inside of the sleeve is, is printed with um, what looks like it would be a, a map or something. That's, that's, that's quite nice. All right, well, here's the main unit. It's actually a little smaller than I thought it was going to be. You, know, you can see here about my hands. Let me just lift this out. Oh, it's quite thin, too. So pictures on the internet and some other videos that you may have seen don't really do the unit justice. I, it's, it's actually smaller than I thought. I thought it was going to be a larger contraption, so... Uh, it's not too bad. They got this nice little slip cover on the, uh, what is plastic or glass? I don't know. We'll take a look at that a, a little bit later. Um, there's a projector in here and it reflects off this surface and then it finally reflects on there. Um, I believe that this is put on there for calibration purposes. We'll take a look at that later. On the front there is a what appears to be a small camera because there are some gesture controls. There's a power button. Um, probably another sensor there. I don't know what that is. Um, oh, it looks like there's a, maybe a micro USB port on the back, probably for firmware updates or later. This is the main connector, I think, for the power. There's some little uh, contact switches there. Oh, there's a speaker. That could be a microphone, too. That's basically the unit itself. Let's take a look at the rest of the box. Oh, this is nicely laid out. You know, um, I have to give them kudos. This is really well packaged. It's very Apple-like. Uh, so let's take a look here. So there is a lithium-ion battery here. Uh, I would believe that that goes into the jog dial, which is this little guy right here, and this gets attached to your steering wheel. Again, when we put this in the car, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the setup of this a little bit later. There is a quick start guide here. looks like there's several. We'll just pull it out of the sleeve and take a quick look. Quick start guide there. Here's a setup guide for the short mount, so if you have a flush dash. Another one for the medium and the tall mount. That's nice. Warning, specification, and warranty. That's written by lawyers. Who cares about that? However, on this side, this is the power. Oh, this is the cable. Well, that's a nice arrangement. Let me slide that out. And in here you have, oh yeah, there's the, uh, there's the mounting part that goes into the puck with the contacts. And on this side, so this is the ODB2 connector. This is the standard port that's on every car made since about 95 or 96. Uh, this is where the unit will get its power and probably some data for the car. So anyways, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. So here's the mount. This is called the short mount. Oh, it's a nice uh, soft silicone. And okay, that's the receptacle for the power puck. We'll look at that later. And on the other side, oh, it tells you the orientation. This is well packaged. And uh, I peel that off and oh yeah, that's the super sticky stuff that'll stick on your dash. It's not permanent but that's really nice. That's a nice touch. This is a really nice piece of kit. They also include some cleaning towelettes for the, uh, for the little HUD screen. That's a nice touch. Pull out another divider. This is a Christmas morning. There's a lot of stuff in this box. Suction base. Ah, oh, this is nice. It's a su suction base. Peel that off. It feels really nice. It's a uh, very premium quality. Permanent sticker to put on your dash if you, if you have too much um, probably texture on your dash so that it gives the suction something to grab onto. I believe that's what the case is. In here there's a uh, short mount, so that's like a ball mount. This is very similar to what you would find in a GPS you would stick on the uh, windshield. They usually have these ball mounts, so there's a short one there. And it looks like to be a longer one here for a taller dash. 
we probably won't end up using these in my current vehicle, but depending on your car in the future, you may or may not use uh, some of these extra mounts. They also include what looks, oh, this says cable clips. So in here you get some little stick on little stickies uh, to hold the cables in place. That's a really nice touch. You don't normally find that in some of these types of products, I think. In here is, oh yeah, that's a, what looks like a, a carrying case of some form for the main unit. That's a nice touch too. Oh, they include a sticker too, so you can put it on your car and advertise everybody got something really expensive in the car. I don't think we're going to be putting that on the car, but thanks for the sticker. I like that. Okay, so that concludes the unboxing of the NAVD. Let's take the next step and actually put it in the car and put it to use and give it some tests. Here inside the car, we're going to install the NAVD. In my case, with my Lincoln, there is a binnacle in front, so we're going to use the low mount uh, profile. It's a, the sticky stuff on the back. All right, well, you just take the unit. There's a process in the manual that shows you how to install this, but I'm just, I've already done it. So it just kind of sits like this. And there's the uh, power puck. It's also a magnetic base. And that just sits in there like so. Then you just take the navdi, you just kind of drop it on like that. That's it. That's all there is to it. I raise up the glass and just pull off the slip cover. Now you want to install the jog dial. In my case, I'm going to stick it right here in the little crook of my steering wheel. It kind of sits there quite nicely. Um, I wish it was a little bit smaller, but this will just have to do it. Just a little rubber strap goes around, just clicks into the backside. You notice the little light is flashing that because it needs to be paired with the Navdi. Let's do that next. So here we are. We're ready to pair it with the Navdi. I'll just press and hold the button on the controller. By the way, the Navdi does everything over Bluetooth. It's all uh, Bluetooth connections to your smartphone. And now we're ready. Now the next step, of course, is to install the app on your phone. So we'll start the pairing process. The first time you fire up the uh, Nav, the app, I'm just going to kind of skip through. You can watch these different things later on. And start the installation. Want to make sure your Nav is on, you have access to the internet, and your car's turned on for power. And it has a variety of different little videos you can watch. I'm going to go through the process so you don't have to. I'll just skip all these steps. Um, there's a position check here you have to do with the lens. My lens is uh, perfect here. This little setup process will help you uh, determine where the port is on your car. Now, in my case here, I haven't found that it helped me at all, but it's a good effort. I have a 2015 Mark C. See, again, it doesn't show me anything about the car. I know where the port is. It's pretty straightforward. Most cars have it exposed here in the driver's side. Sorry about the glare, folks. I actually begin the uh, pairing process. First, it wants to type in the information. There we go. Put in my email address. If you don't know my email address already, folks, you're not subscribing to the channel <laughs> or our forum for that matter. Now we're going to do the pairing process. It's a two-step process. First is the actual unit itself. And then it wants to make sure that I have access to data. So you're just going to walk through the different processes of enabling different things. Now, one of the most interesting things about the Navdi, again, I apologize for the, for the glare, um, is this notion of glances. I'll go through it, but what it is in a nutshell, it allows you to use hand gestures back and forth like this on the Navdi to uh, dismiss or select uh, various things on the screen when it prompts you. It's really quite cool. Um, again, we'll, we'll go through that a little bit later. Uh, for now, I'm just going to enable it, and it wants to do a pairing. Um, you can't see my Navdi right now, but it's giving me a five-digit code, so I'm just going to put that in. This is the standard Bluetooth pairing situation. And we want access to directions. Yes, thank you. Uh, I want access to my contacts so I can call people on the phone, on the, uh, on the Navdi through the system. It's all hands-free. It's really quite neat. Uh, Navigation, yes, of course. Browse my music, yes. I want to be able to control my uh, phone's music through the Nav again. Notifications, yes. Do I want to use voice search? Of course. I mean, that's the whole point of one of these units is being able to use voice navigation to do different things. Now we're all set, so let's get going. You can watch a short video, but you don't have to because I'm going to do it for you. All right, so there's the GPS location. Down along the bottom, you have a variety of different buttons. Favorites, for example, where you can put in favorite locations you visit on a regular basis. Um, along the top, you have contacts, so you can pull up your different contacts, put them in as well. At the bottom, you have glances. Now, I'm going to enable glances. It's not turned on by default. 
and you get to choose whether you want the NAVD to read aloud uh, the glances, uh, show content only, read and show. Um, personally, I like to just show the content and then you can turn on the different items that you want it to be able to show. So if you're driving around, you need fuel, um, it can prompt you on the screen. Look, you're, you're, because it can read the fuel level on the vehicle. So it can tell you whether you need fuel. Do you want to be able to uh, go to a gas station? You say yes, and it will direct you to the nearest gas station. It's kind of a neat feature. Um, then down here, you have some social media ones. I like to watch my Twitter feed, of course. Uh, maybe my mail. Uh, maybe some messenger stuff. Uh, it's up to you. Oh, yeah, definitely text messages. The other stuff you can turn on after the fact. And then you have notification glances. This comes up a little bit later once you start using some of the apps on your phone. And then lastly, down here on the bottom, you have different settings. You can change different things such as your audio volume. Yes, thank you. Um, whether you want it to turn on, uh, turn by turn navigation. Um, yeah, sometimes I like to turn that off. Uh, whether you want a welcome message. Do you want it to give you speed limit warnings? Again, it pulls from the internet, from the maps, the local speed limits, and it detects the speed on your car, of course, if you've got it plugged into the OBD port, and it will tell you whether you're exceeding the speed limit. Then you have your navigation, so you have things like avoidances. I don't like toll roads, and I certainly don't like unpaved roads. And your route calculation can be a variety of choices here, fastest, the shortest. I generally like the fastest. If you want it to recalculate your fastest routes, you can have it automatically or never or ask me before recalculating. And then down on the bottom, you have general where you can do things like uh, limit your cellular data and then your units, whether you want kilometers or miles. And then here under NAVD, we'll show you, this is where you do your software updates. Now keep in mind, your software updates are done over Bluetooth, so they tend to be a little bit slow. So make sure you don't do this on a short trip or a long trip, whatever, do it after hours. Uh, because anybody who's experienced updating a software update on an Apple iPhone uh, to an Apple Watch will know how slow this is. So um, do this when you have some time. Anyhow, that's the general overview. Um, at this point, we really don't have to do anything on the phone. You know, I could enter an address if I wanted to. It has some shortcuts, but I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to use the voice search function on the NAVD itself to uh, pull up a, a local destination. So let's give that a go. So most of the interaction with the NAVD is done with the jog wheel dial. And I can kind of scroll up and scroll back so I can close this dashboard, um, play music. I can look at the different glances. I can do a place search. Um, dashboard is interesting. If I just press the center dial, you get this standard user interface that most cars have. I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to press the back button here. And you can look at your map. So if I press map, it gives me a quick overview of the map. Now I can zoom in and zoom out just by turning the jog wheel. So I can keep turning, 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 turning until I zoom out like that or I can zoom back in. Again, if I press the jog wheel button in the middle, I can go back to my maps. Here I can go into my map options so I can do a, what's called a manual zoom. I like manual zoom because what will happen is that when you're navigating after a while, the map will zoom back in. So if you happen to zoom out and you're driving along, uh, the NAVD will actually zoom back in. I happen to like the manual zoom because I can just kind of set it and leave it. Some of this stuff here um, will start to get populated, obviously, as you as you use the unit. I can pull up my music. Um, if you have an iPhone, you can use Siri, and I'm sure if you have Android, you can use the Google Now function to uh, do different things like pull up apps, uh, listen to music, get directions. Again, you can pull up your contacts here on the NAVD, so if I press that, I get recent contacts, which I haven't used, of course, because that uses in combination with the phone. And then you have some settings in here. You can set things like the brightness. So that's at maximum brightness during the day, and then you can, of course, you can back it off to virtually nothing. I'm going to leave it right about here for the camera's sake today. This is plenty bright during the day. Um, I have absolutely no problems reading this during the day. All right, so let's go back. Let's try the voice function, shall we? Find me a coffee shop near me. Here's one I found for find me a coffee shop near me. So as you can see, it brought up a variety of different, uh, different coffee shops that I can pick from. Um, let's go to Starbucks. That's fun. And there we are. Here's the glance function. You'll notice here on the right-hand side that it shows me the destination, and there's this vertical bar. Now, that's a timer. After a while that will go away. But I can dismiss the timer and that side screen just by swiping, just like that. So that's a glance. I'll get back or shoo it away. 
you have to make sure that the little eye on the front of the unit is pointing towards you. It's not obscured, but you can just use hand gestures. And this works all over the place. It's really quite neat. Again, I can use the jog wheel to kind of zoom in and zoom out on my destination. Remember, I have uh, voice uh, navigation prompts turned off, so you're not going to hear Bitch and Betty. So I can zoom out. This is my point of view. You can see that it's very inobtrusive, it just kind of sits there. Now, obviously, in a car with a binnacle like this, it raises the unit up so that um, I generally have no problem seeing out. Now, with a Model 3, of course, which is, you know, our interest after the fact, with the dash being quite a bit lower, we're probably going to end up having using one of those standoffs. Now, I don't know what that's going to end up looking like. Um, again, when we get a chance to actually try the car out in person, we'll have to compare using this to say what's already on the screen. Um, you know, what Tesla's intending us to use on the big screen to compare the two. So for those of you who are really looking for something like this, um, this might be a good solution. Now I took a little detour here and you can see that the unit has automatically recalculated my destination. That road that I was driving on, I went down it purposely because it's under construction. It's blocked off at one end. Now, one of the things I don't like about my particular navigation system that comes with my car is the fact that I can't choose another destination without stopping the vehicle. Um, you know, hands-free legislation says you can't be touching anything. So let's try this one. We're already driving. We're on a destination. So I'm just going to press the middle button and pick voice search. Find me the nearest library. Here's what I found for Find Me Library. Call ended. So a variety of different things, mostly schools. I, I asked for a library, not really a, a school. So I'm gonna try play uh, try a new place search. Find me the nearest mall. Sorry. I couldn't find a destination for Find Me Mall. Hmm, let's try that again. Find me the nearest shopping mall. Here's what I found for Find Me Shopping Mall. Hmm, Home Depot. That's not really a mall now, is it? Collision Center. Well, obviously, you can tell here the voice search needs a little bit of work, so um, basic things like coffee shop and gas seem to work. Maybe if we tried something a little more specific. Five Guys Fries. Here's what I found for Five Guys Fries. Ah, see, that works, that's more specific. It's a little early for lunch, so I'll just cancel that. We're back on our navigation. I just wanted to take uh, just a couple of minutes here and give me my final thoughts and observations about the Navdi. Um, after using it for about two, maybe three weeks now in my car. And first things first, um, I really like this. Um, it's, a, it's a really neat little device. Now. You know, there's always room for improvement in everything, and I certainly have my own opinions about that. But I think for a first go at a product, it's uh, it's really well built. Um, as you saw with the packaging, it's really well done. I think the construction on this is is solid. It's actually smaller than I thought. You know, for some people, I'm I'm sure they'll probably think there's some room for improvement. Uh, you know, miniaturization make it a little bit smaller. I, I could see that. I think one of my biggest things would. Um, would be the, that, the, that the glass on the Navdi could be a little bit larger. The other thing too you have to remember when you use one of these, the field of view on it is actually quite narrow. So unless you're looking straight at it or distances from side to side, you, you actually can't see it. And in one of the videos, I kind of bumped the camera and, 
you know, you kind of lost vision of it a little bit. So you, it really needs to be in front of you. This is not for, for passengers. They can't see this. So this is really a driver item. I think one of the nicest things about the Navdi is the fact that it actually relies on your smartphone rather than being its own thing. Anybody who's ever owned a third party GPS device in a car knows that what you buy is really what you get other than maybe updating the maps in it that you're not really gonna get any extra features because they don't do firmware updates. Most of the smarts in the Navda are in your smartphone. So one of the nice benefits of that, of course, is with, with app updates and, and firmware updates, that the functionality of this device can be greatly expanded. For those of you who have a navigation system that's built into your vehicle, again, it falls back in that same category as GPSs. Uh, you know, other than updating the maps, you're not gonna get any extra functionality. I, my general opinion about navigation systems built in the cars is that they're not that great. So what does this thing cost? Um, in the US, this sells for $499. Uh, and in Canada, it's coming into Best Buy, and I just got the notice, and it's gonna be selling for about $700. I personally think that a device like this should be more like um, $399 US. When you really start getting into $500 territory, so it's getting a little bit of expensive. However, when you take everything into account of what it does, yeah, maybe, maybe it's worth 500. That's up to you to decide. Um, is, is it really worth you spending that kind of money for something that you may or may not use? Uh, after using this for two, almost three weeks now, I find that uh, the navigation system on this, I like it better than the one that's in my car. So if I had a choice of not having that navigation system in my car, and we know that, that navigation systems using cars are an option, and they're rather expensive, I'd rather spend the money on this. Unfortunately, in the video review, I didn't get a chance to, um, to show you any of the social media stuff, like when I get a tweet or something, it actually comes up in that glance and you can dismiss it. That's, that's really nice, and I think um, that's kind of important going forward because we're gonna see a lot more um, hands-free legislation now. Uh, you know, cell phones are being banned, uh, use of cell phones, I should say, and cars are being banned. And I can foresee a time where uh, you know the legislation might come down and say, you know what, that's it, no more buttons in the car, everything will have to be voice commands. Um, I think in some ways the Model 3 is kind of getting there first because there's not gonna be any buttons at all in the car. Anyways, that's a discussion for another day. Anyways, my final thoughts on the Navdi, I really like it, uh, thumbs up. Um, but then again, I'm a kind of a sucker for toys, so. But at the end of the day, I think it's a nice device. If it was a little bit cheaper, I think it would sell like gangbusters, so I encourage you, if you get a chance to check it out, do so. Uh, whether it's for you or not, that's up to you to decide. I just thought I'd do this video so that you get a chance to see it so that you don't have to spend the money to do it. Anyhow, that's it for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. That just makes us all the much happier. Anyhow, you can follow us on Twitter at Model3Owners. Don't forget to uh, check out our forum at Model3OwnersClub.com. I uh, appreciate if you had a few moments to look at our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Model3OwnersClub and that helps keeps the channel going. And don't forget, we also have some, uh, some really cool Model 3 t-shirts uh, show off your cred. So anyways, that's it for today's segment, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.